As a result of starting to implement everything I'd learned, I was feeling like myself again. My health was falling into place. Instead of shaving years off my life, I was adding more good years back on. As I got healthier, I realized that I wasn't totally wrong when I had my breakdown in the car on the way to our vacation. Welcome back to another episode of the Peak Performance Life Podcast. Today, I am excited to read to you the second chapter of my new book. Uh, again, still working on the title, uh, but uh, so I don't want to reveal what the title is just yet. But um, if you haven't already listened to chapter one, which uh, is a few episodes ago, it's called Changing Your Belief System and Identity Around Health. I highly recommend you go listen to that chapter first. And then here is chapter two. So let's get right into it. Uh, as you know, this uh, episode, as all of our episodes, are brought to you by Peak Performance. And to save 20% on your first order, go to buypeakperformance.com. That's B-U-Y peakperformance.com. And also get on the email list there as well. When you enter your email to get 20% off your first order, you'll also get on our email list, which means we'll shoot you an email Every time new podcast episodes like this are released, different blog articles, anytime we have some good information or sometimes we have a special holiday sale or something going on, you'll be notified of that uh, once you get on the email list. So here we go. Let's get straight into chapter two without further ado. The title of chapter two is called Getting Out of Pain, Inflammation, and Lack of Energy. Up until about 2013, I was living my life like a lot of Americans probably still are. I was working hard in front of a computer for long stretches of time, typing all day. I loved my family and spent as much time with them as I could, but a lot of my energy was going into work at the expense of other things. I was also eating a lot of bread and carbs. I was buying cheap food and thinking that because I was relatively young, I was in my early 30s at the time, it wouldn't be a problem but I quickly learned that I was wrong. Soon enough, I was aching all the time. I would wake up with low energy, brain fog. I started getting shooting pains, massive pain and inflammation all throughout my hands, fingers, wrist, and forearms, all the way down past my elbow, even into my triceps and biceps a little bit as well. So really bad pain all throughout my arms. And it got to the point where I could barely even type on a computer without being in complete pain and agony. Right away, I started looking for solutions, as many of you probably have for your own pain and inflammation problems. So the first thing I did, what do we all do, is I got online to see if I could buy something to fix the problem. I started Googling and searching Amazon for different wrist braces, compression sleeves, pain relief creams, pain relief devices, you name it. Some of those things might have offered me some tiny short-term relief, but none of it actually fixed the root cause of the problem. I went to local chiropractors. I got all sorts of spinal decompression treatments to see if that would help, um, but I got a similar outcome. Temporary relief before more flare-ups down the line. My daughters at the time were about two and three years old, and I was wondering if I'd ever be able to type again, let alone be the active father that I wanted to be. I kept going that way for at least a year or two, trying quick fixes, getting nowhere, and feeling disappointed. If anything, my situation was getting worse. Eventually, I decided that I needed a vacation and that I would take my whole family with me. Maybe I'm just working too hard, I thought. A little bit of time off will make me feel better. My whole body was inflamed, and my arms would be in pain after typing just a couple sentences on the keyboard so bad to the point where I had to use a voice dictation software, which I used for around two years, because just if I typed one or two sentences on the keyboard, I'd be in too much pain, it just hurt too much. Even so, I still couldn't escape my problems, even on vacations, because my arms hurt so much. Literally, my wife had to drive the whole way, and I remember sitting in the passenger seat with my wife driving and my two kids in the back when the enormity of this situation hit me. I couldn't work. I was constantly in pain. I was in massive amounts of debt. I didn't have the energy or clarity to get out of it. I didn't have the energy to be there for my family. I didn't know if I would ever feel like me again. As these realizations broke over me one by one, I started crying right there in the passenger seat of my car. I was a young guy in the prime of my life, 
How could this all be happening? Why was I in so much pain? Why was my energy so low? I was living just like so many other people were, right? I didn't know it then, but that moment was actually the start of my personal health journey that's brought me here right to right now in this moment speaking to you. I was definitely starting at the bottom. Sometimes what you think in the moment is the worst thing that could ever happen to you. In that moment, I was sure that this was the worst thing that could ever happen to me. This pain was the worst pain that could ever happen to me. But sometimes when you think what's, it's something is the worst thing that could ever happen to you, it actually turns out to be the best thing that ever happened to you. So I say that because if you're not where you wanna be right now with your health or in any area of your life, just be open to the possibility that it might actually be the best thing that ever happened to you. Why? Because it, it brought you to this moment right now where you are ready to make a real long lasting change for the best. Why inflammation is public health enemy number one. Desperate for answers on how to fix my life, I started diving into health research. The pain I was experiencing seemed like way too much for someone my age, but I couldn't figure out exactly why. Soon enough, I started to realize why my previous approaches were not working. I was inflamed everywhere and it was the inflammation that was causing my pain and other problems. Without addressing the inflammation first, I'd never feel better. I realized that I was previously trying to fix the pain in my arms using topical things like pain relief creams and devices, different compression sleeves and braces, you name it. I was trying to solve my problem with solutions that didn't address the core root of the problem, which is my inflammation, which was my inflammation. It's the same thing today. I see so many people with knee pain, back pain, wrist pain, shoulder pain, you name it. And they're trying to solve their problem with a back brace or a knee brace or a wrist brace. Seems logical, right? And while these things may give you some short-term relief in some cases, they don't fix the root cause of the problem because the root cause of the problem is inflammation. If you're not familiar with inflammation, here's a little rundown. Our bodies evolved to be able to protect themselves from injury, infection, and other acute traumas. One way they do this is through an inflammatory response. When we get a cut, for example, our immune system responds by mounting an inflammatory response in the area of the cut. We get redness, swelling, and pain in that area. Though it feels unpleasant for us, the reaction is just our body trying to protect the affected area so we don't damage it even further. When we get a cold, for example, our inflammatory response might manifest as symptoms like a sore throat or stuffy nose, these responses actually aid our body in getting rid of whatever pathogens, whatever pathogens are invading our body. In small doses and in the short term, inflammation actually helps us. The problem occurs when our inflammatory response is turned on and kept on for a very long period of time. That's what we call chronic systemic inflammation. Maybe it goes without saying, but our bodies are not designed to be inflamed for long periods of time. In fact, chronic inflammation causes major damage to your tissues and organs and breaks down your immune defenses and makes us more susceptible to disease. Chronic inflammation can often go unnoticed for years, causing silent damage in our bodies without us even realizing it. But the consequences of this damage are tremendous and touch almost every aspect of our health. One of the most common side effects of inflammation is pain. Inflammation is behind common painful conditions like arthritis, fibromyalgia, and lower back pain. This pain can become debilitating and completely get in the way of your ability to live your life, something I was all too familiar with. Still, the damage caused by inflammation doesn't stop there. Aside from the short-term pains and brain fog, Inflammation has been linked to chronic health issues like diabetes, cancer, cardiovascular disease, depression, osteoporosis, diabetes, chronic kidney disease, inflammatory bowel disease, and even Alzheimer's disease. And because three out of every five people in the world die from chronic inflammatory diseases like heart disease, cancer, stroke, diabetes, one way of looking at it is that chronic inflammatory diseases are likely the most significant cause of death worldwide. So as you can see, this all comes down to inflammation 
And this is when I realized that optimal health is about lowering inflammation in your body more than anything else. That's right. Kind of ad living here on this, on this chapter here. I personally believe that when you're looking at health, it's not about counting calories or this or that. It's about lowering inflammation in the body. Now, before diving into this research on inflammation, I didn't understand what was causing all the symptoms and health problems I had been experiencing. But now I could see that inflammation had been silently destroying my body, and I could see where I'd gone wrong in the past attempts to get better and relieve my pain. You see, in all the approaches I tried, I'd been looking for a solution outside myself. I was looking for external fixes like the creams and the compression sleeves and the braces. Those are topical solutions. Those are solutions that are outside myself, but this was actually an internal problem. So after taking health, my health into my own hands, I had an epiphany. They call it inflammation because it comes from inside of you. And what happens inside of your body depends on what you put into your body. So what you put into your health definitely includes exercise and environment, but, I'd, be, but I'd, oh, I'd overlooked one of the most obvious aspects at that time, and that was the food I was eating. And I soon realized that if I had changed what I put in my body, i.e. better food, I would change the results I was getting. Why a good diet is your best weapon against inflammation. Because inflammation is at the root of so many health problems, it is one of the most important things to pay attention to if you want to improve your health. And a poor diet is one of the biggest risk factors for chronic and systemic inflammation. The foods we eat have the ability to alter our body's inflammatory response. And while some foods encourage more inflammation, other foods, by the way, sugar and bread and fried foods, for example, and even alcohol, those foods encourage inflammation in your body, while other foods like whole foods, vegetables, foods with high flavonoid content can fight against inflammation to our advantage. When we eat ultra processed foods full of sugar, refined carbs, and other junk, our inflammatory response is activated. In other words, they are pro-inflammatory foods. When we keep eating pro-inflammatory foods every day, we shouldn't be surprised when our bodies swell up and we start developing pain and related health problems. On the other hand, there are tons of foods that we can eat that are anti-inflammatory. Some of these include whole natural foods like avocados, fresh salmon, different vegetables, all of which can help fight inflammation in the body and get us back to a healthy state. In one study, people with fibromyalgia who ate more inflammatory foods developed a hypersensitivity to pain, a definite negative outcome. On the other hand, another study showed that an anti-inflammatory diet had positive effects on rheumatoid arthritis symptoms. Even well-known mainstream healthcare centers like the Cleveland Clinic and Harvard Medical School promote a healthy diet with foods like vegetables, avocados, and salmon to reduce inflammation and relieve chronic body pain. People who follow the standard American diet, aptly acronymed as SAD, are so, or a so-called Western lifestyle, have significantly higher rates of diseases linked to chronic inflammation compared to people in non-Westernized populations and people who eat the highest amounts of inflammatory foods in their diets have a 36% increased risk of cardiovascular disease and mortality. In all, the evidence is clear that a pro-inflammatory diet increases our risk of heart disease and even death. In addition, inflammatory foods like sugar, refined carbohydrates, and fried foods tend to be the same foods that make us gain the most weight. So the same foods that cause inflammation are the same foods that cause you to gain weight. So if you are overweight, overweight, when you reduce inflammatory foods, not only will you lower inflammation in your body, you will typically also lose some of the extra un unwanted weight as an extra benefit. Once I learned all of this vital information, I began to understand that changing my food would mean less inflammation, which would mean less pain and more energy to live the life I wanted to live. For the first time in years, I had hope again. Why addressing inflammation needs to be our number one priority. As a result of starting to implement everything I'd learned, I was feeling like myself again, 
My health was falling into place. Instead of shaving years off my life, I was adding more good years back on. As I got healthier, I realized that I wasn't totally wrong when I had my breakdown in the car on the way to our vacation. The truth was, I wasn't living all that differently from many other people. And from my new perspective, that was a pretty scary thought. Countless people are doing the same things I was doing without realizing the danger that they're putting themselves in. Looking back, I can see so many examples where I was trying so hard to get healthy, but doing so in such a backwards, unproductive way. And the same goes for so many people around me. I remember once I went out with a friend. He was putting all his focus on counting calories. He actually sent his meal back to the kitchen because they put olive oil, which is one of the healthiest things you can consume, by the way. They put olive oil on his meal, and he was so worried about what that little olive oil would do to his calorie count. So he sent back the meal and asked them to make a new one for him because they had put olive oil on his meal. Now, that same friend, I, I had watched him drink three Coke Zeros already that day, okay? So Coke Zeros were okay because they had zero calories, even though they cause inflammation in your body. Whereas olive oil, which is one of the healthiest things you can consume for your body, which lowers inflammation, increases your healthy lifespan, that he sent back because he was counting calories. So he was obviously trying to make a change by counting calories and watching what he ate, but he was making so many harmful mistakes in the process. From loading up his body with unhealthy artificial ingredients and in diet or zero calorie soda, to missing out on the health promoting benefits of olive oil. Another example is that for years, my father would drink orange juice every day because he thought it was healthy for him. Never realizing that the enormous amounts of sugar in these fruit juice drinks that are very far from eating a fruit in its original whole form, by the way, very, very different drinking orange juice and eating an orange, very different. Lastly, let me give my own personal example here. Years ago, I heard that the healthy thing to do was to be vegan. And by the way, there are some people, I have some friends who are vegan and they're extremely healthy. They do vegan the right way. So while this might work for some people, I personally did it horribly wrong. I was at, see, I was having a hard time as a vegan getting full just eating fruits and vegetables. So what would I do? I would go to Subway and order a foot long sandwich, a vegetable sandwich, right? Which basically just had a small amount of vegetables, a little bit of lettuce and tomatoes and whatever else was on there in a huge foot long thing of bread. And I later realized this bread was one of the big things that was causing massive inflammation in my body. I was also eating French fries, which are vegan by the way, pasta. And I was eating all sorts of vegan desserts that were still high in sugar, but I thought, hey, they're vegan, right? They, they, they must be healthy, right? But they're not. And so they were full of sugar. I thought as long as it was vegan, it was healthy. All of this caused massive damage via inflammation in my body since I was consuming high amounts of sugar and carbs. Now without, the right now, without the right information, unhealthy choices can unknowingly rob so many people of happiness and health. And over the course of a lifetime, those choices can get in the way of a long life with people we love. The simplest key to turning the entire trend around is to lower inflammation in the body. But it is also more than that. It is something schools never teach and doctors never stress. The key is to stop looking for short-term local fixes and to focus on holistic and overall health, right? This is not about having pain in your back and then running to buy a back brace to help stop your pain. That's a short-term local fix. That's not solving the, the root cause of the problem, which is inflammation. And remember, inflammation comes from inside of you comes from what you put into your body, the foods that you eat. When people experience back pain or knee pain, their first instinct is usually to get something to fix the back or to fix the knee. But most of the time, the problem isn't actually the back or the knee itself, right? Unless you've been into a car accident and you have some acute injury in that area, if you've had long-term knee pain or long-term back pain, those are just the places that are a symptom of a much larger issue that's manifesting itself. The problem is in the entire system and the entire system needs to all be addressed at once. The more I read about people who had lowered inflammation through better food and exercise and how their lives had dramatically improved, 
the more I knew I needed to spread this message. Instead of spending thousands of dollars on doctors, medication, external fixes that might not even work, why not go right to the root cause and fix everything? For most people, the root cause of all these issues is inflammation in the body. And the solution to inflammation is simple. Change what you put in your body. In the next few chapters of this book, we'll dive deep into how to eat for your health. In chapter three, we'll talk about one part of the diet that causes more problems than any other, and that's sugar. In chapter four, we'll talk about changing your relationship with fats and you know, healthy fats and, and why they're actually very good and can lower your inflammation in your body. Healthy fats, just like olive oils, avocado oils, fish oil, um, MCT oil. And in chapter five, we'll talk about putting it all together with a well-balanced, healthy diet that works for you. So let's look at the action steps from this chapter two, considering the role of inflammation in your own health. So now that you've learned more about the importance of inflammation, you may want to slow down and reflect on your own health challenges to consider whether inflammation is contributing to any of your health issues. Spend some time reflecting on these questions. Number one, do you have chronic pain of any sort? Have you had a hard time finding anything that helps you manage the pain, right? So have you had back pain for a long period of time or shoulder pain or knee pain or any kind of maybe even carpal tunnel or wrist pain that I, like I thought I had? Think about that. Do you have any sort of chronic pain? Have you been trying to find surface level fixes to those specific health problems? For example, do you rely on pain relief creams or massages all the time? I'm not saying it's, you can get a massage every once in a while, but if you're, if you relying on a massages multiple times per week or every week and pain relief creams, or you need to go to this chiropractor treatment, or you need this pain relief device or any other kind of quick fixes for your pain, think about that, okay? What is your diet like? Is it filled with foods that feed inflammation like processed foods, sugar, refined carbohydrates, junk food? Have you ever considered, in number, question number four, have you ever considered inflammation as a possible root cause of your health problems? What role might inflammation play in your body? Think about these questions and think about this concept of inflammation is caused by what you put in your body. You can get that back brace, but if you continue to eat sugar, drink alcohol, eat fried foods, eat lots of bread and other inflammatory foods, then don't be surprised if you continue to have back pain, right? Because the back brace is not gonna heal the back pain. So it's really something I want you to think about here as we come to an end to this chapter and we'll continue with other chapters in future episodes. So I hope you get a lot out of this and I really hope that you really get this concept of lowering inflammation in your body and seeing the important of inflammation in your body and why it really, in my opinion, if someone said to me, hey, what is health all about? My answer would be health is about lowering inflammation in your body. So I hope you really take that concept home and remember it for as long as you live. Because again, most diseases are caused by inflammation. Most pain in the body is caused by inflammation. So anything you can do to lower inflammation in your body is going to do enormous things for you in terms of not only relieving your short-term pain and increasing your mental energy, by the way, as well, but also for your long-term results and living a long, happy, healthy life. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode and uh, see you on the next one. Thanks for listening. And just a reminder, if you haven't yet tried any of our Peak Performance products, you get 20% off your first order. We have one of the largest selection of USDA certified organic superfood powders, as well as very high quality supplements. And you get 20% off your first order at buypeakperformance.com. That's www.buypeakperformance.com.